a regular expression um, to, to read it. Uh, another thing that helps is to be familiar with what this regular expression does. Um, you know, that'll help a lot. Uh, there's a big difference between something that parses a natural language and something that's just like an email parser or processor. So, um, another tactic is to write down strings that match the regular expression. So you might just start, you know, looking through the regular expression and just, you know, writing down possible strings it would accept, or you think it would, it would accept. So what does this regular expression do? Uh, we're going to use the decompose method. Okay, we see a big group. We should always look for groups, well, not so much character classes, groups and operators. We can split by that group, and we see uh, there's an alternation operator, and then we have multiple character classes. So this um, looks like something HF 0 to 9, that's probably hexadecimal, and we can have six of them, or this one's very similar, we can have three of them. So we can have either a six character hexadecimal number or a three character hexadecimal number. Uh, with an optional pound sign. That sounds to me like uh, HTML color. And these are possible strings that you might have plugged in to match against that. What does this regular expression um, do? Well, a red flag is like it has an ampersand in it. If it has an ampersand in it, it's probably to match uh, email addresses. So we're going to use the decompose method here again. Uh, and we'll highlight the ampersand because that's super important. Um, and we have three groups. Yeah. The at, not the ampersand. <laughs> oh, at. Thank you. The okay, so we uh, we split by the at and the groups, um, and we see that it has like alphanumeric at the top, um, and underscores and periods and dashes, and then we have some digits and alphanumeric characters and then it ends in either a letter or a period. So what are some, so, so this might be a regular expression that you yourself got from some internet site um, and it didn't say, it just said email validation or something. But what does this really accept? Here are some possible like accepted strings for this regular expression. And you might just use it, but someone could really just enter garbage, especially, especially if you didn't uh, validate again on like the server side or something. And these might be perfectly valid within the spec, but you probably don't want them. So, how do you build regular expressions? Well. It's important to, have to know what you want to match and know what you don't want to match. I know that sounds simple, but it's very key. So you start with something really simple and you build up from it. But before we go into that, just because we can build a regular expression for something doesn't mean we should. What I'm going to do now is build a regular expression to match a date. But, you know, should we do that? Um, I'm arguing yes in this case because we're going to use it for natural language parsing. Uh, there's this site that some of you might use, Remember the Milk. And it's like a task sort of website. You can enter new tasks. So I can say uh, RE presentation next Thursday. And you'll know March 18th. So this is an example of where you could use regular expressions and it would be valid. You couldn't cast uh, next Thursday. So uh, we'll decide what we want to match. Um, we're going to match a month, date, year, including the three month or three letter abbreviations. Uh, here, here's a possible match and a couple things that are not matches. So we're going to start with something super simple, 
just match dates in October. So we're going to just use all literals and just that's the regular expression and that will match October 20th. Okay, now we want to modify it to match each day in October. So we can add this. Now there's something wrong with this which I'll go over into the next slide, but basically what we're trying to do here is we're going to match a 1 to a 3 and a 0 to a 9 as a second digit. Okay, so that regular expression before didn't match the first through the ninth, so we're going to make the first digit optional. And there are things wrong with this. Uh, for example, you could have October 39th and October 0th. I'm not sure if that's even a word. Um, but, you know, this is a very simple example. You could actually match all the days, so, but we're, we won't go into that. Now we can expand it to match any year from 1,000 to 399, and that's here, uh, 1 to 3, and then 9, 0 to 9 for the rest of the digits. And then, uh, so, we, not sure if you guys saw here, but we have 0 to 9 repeated many times. We can simplify that to just having a 3, because uh, that pattern was repeated three times. Um, and then we can match October's abbreviation. We just add a group and an alternation operator um, to match October's abbreviation. And then we can add more months, May, December, and you see here we use, um, we use the whole month names here and abbreviated here. And uh, there's two alternate regular expressions. That's something you'll find. For matching a certain subset of patterns, there's multiple regular expressions to match that. Um, so you might, you know, that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, which regular expression we use here depends really on our, like what we're doing. Uh, this regular expression um, actually lends itself better to being able to be loaded from a database. And you probably wouldn't need that in this case, but you might in another. Um, so yeah, and then there are other options. Do we ignore white space? Do we ignore punctuation? You know, and that can be solved very easily. So these are just other random odds and ends. Uh, there's just what are called uh, regex builders. Uh, they're interactive, so you kind of don't know, have to know the syntax you know, by memory. They'll help you build stuff. So let's say um, we had uh, this apple snapple thing. Um, so this is a simple example of the other regular expression I showed earlier. The dot means that um, I want to accept any character. And it matches both apple and snapple. If I remove this, that would just say match one character before the pop up PPLE, um, and that would only result in Apple. Okay, so there's a, a list of these builders. Um, you know, especially when you're starting out, you might just want to use these. It's wh whatever is your preference. I tend to not use them um, just because usually I'm not doing anything that that complicated. So um, I figured I should do a custom project using regular, like demonstrating regular expressions.